No matter what changes we have had in the last week, one thing is very clear. We are drowning in a massive economic crisis and our priority should be to get through this immediately if we are to keep our heads above water without drowning. Former chairman of the Sri Lanka Tea Board, Rohan Pethiagoda, is one of those who brings some clarity into what we are facing right now and I invited him into the studio for a little chat. Rohan, welcome. Um, a lot has happened in the last week, bouquets, brickbats, all kinds of things happening. Uh, but without losing focus, what is the priority of this newly appointed Prime Minister? I think the first priority he has is to tell the people the truth, to level with the people. And he made a good start in his speech to the nation by telling us how grave the predicament in which we find ourselves is. And that it's going to be a long while to come out of it. He said two months, but I think he's kidding. The thing to avoid is to give, to, to avoid giving false promises. Um, he, within 24 hours of being appointed, he came up with this number of $4 billion coming from Japan in economic aid. This is not true. It, it cannot be true. And so I, I would avoid, if I were him, of giving false hope. It's much better to be realistic and explain to the people that we can come out of this predicament only through our own labour. Nobody's going to give us a free lunch. How bad a situation are we in? I think it's very grave. This is a generational recovery. If you look at other countries that have faced similar economic uh, issues to this one, um, it's, it's going to be uh, a period where we're going to see hyperinflation. We can't avoid it because the next phase is, having seen food prices go up by almost 50% in the past few months, people are going to ask for higher wages to compensate, to, to travel to work, for example, and there's no money to do that. We, we can increase taxes, but the economy has fallen, so tax revenue is going to be in any case small. So the government has to keep printing, and the more they print, the more inflation we have. And there's no real easy way out of that cycle in, in the medium term, in the two to five year term, where we're looking at dark times. There is an economic crisis, but there's also a lot of focus on a constitutional crisis, if I may call it that. What do you think should take precedence? How should we go about this? The economy. I don't think the constitution is that relevant at this time. I think the people who are asking for reforms have got a good case. Those reforms definitely need to be done, but that's not the problem. If you think about it, Sri Lanka was very nearly reduced to bankruptcy in the 1970s by Mrs. Bandaranaike's government, and that didn't even have an executive presidency. So governments can do a lot of harm without too much power. But to come out of this present problem, I don't think it's a political reform that we need. It's just clever economic thinking and most of all, patience on the part of the public. Public impatience is the biggest danger we have. Rohan, there's so much news going around. No one fact checks. There's so much fake news. There are keyboard warriors with their own opinions. What would your words of advice be to citizens of Sri Lanka? Tell the truth, however bitter and painful it is, just tell the truth. When people know the truth, there's less room for fake news to take root because then the fake news that comes from, from just wishful thinking, for example, gets eliminated. So uh, I think the people just need to be able to trust the government that we're all in this together and it's only by our joint labor, our joint effort, the hard work that we can come out of this. And it's, there's no quick fix to this problem. If you had a formula, even if it's a generational formula, what would that, for us to get out of this, what would that entail? So the formula is very simple. It's just that it's painful. The formula is cut government spending to the bone. So that means no new recruitment, no increases in salaries, and we work more. We have 26 public holidays this year. We can do away with 15 of those without too much pain. 15 holidays cancelled means three more weeks of work every year. Three weeks of work is 6% of our economic output. To get 6% growth is magic, for example. So what we need to do is basically cut the amount of money that we spend, increase the money that we earn through hard work. There's no other solution to this problem than hard work. If anyone's promising you uh, subsidies or relief measures, it's not going to work. But that's not to say that we shouldn't support the poorest part of our community. So I think the poorest 1 million families in Sri Lanka desperately need to be assisted to, to to overcome this crisis and not go into hunger. I think we have a duty to do that. And that's going to take some pain as well because that's looking at maybe 300 billion rupees a year in today's money. That's, that's a massive spend. It's three times education spend, for example. So we have to do that, but we're going to keep printing money to do these things and therefore inflation is going to keep going up. And there's no easy way out of that. Rohan, you're like that doctor that is administering some really painful injection, but uh, I hope it will work your formula and somebody will stick with it. 
even though it's going to be painful and maybe 10 years down the road, 20 years down the road, we might be back where we started or back where we were. Back in 2019. 2019. Thank you so much. You're welcome.